The next command that is worth covering is the get pull command. Now, if you watched the last video uh, where we did both a get fetch and a get merge, uh, get pull will replace both of those commands in basically one command. It just makes more sense to me to use the simplified version, which is get pull. So right now the scenario is my remote repository is one commit ahead and I can do a git pull. Now, normally, uh, you're gonna need to specify the remote branch of origin master. Uh, however, when we did a git remote command, again, in a prior video, we set up git remote with a slash u, where we specified the remote branch of origin master. Therefore, now that we're doing a git pull command, it is very simply git pull, and you will see that we have a fast forward merge uh, and our demo.txt is now up to date. Um, a couple of things worth noting here, a couple of important things. If you have uncommitted changes on your local repo, uh, you may choose to either stash those changes, which we will talk about in a future video, or you could discard those changes if they're not needed, but probably they're needed. So we're gonna learn how to stash changes um, or uh, you could also commit those changes and push that commit. So you need to have a clean working repo locally before you do a git pull. That's the big takeaway. You have to have a clean repo um, locally. And then additionally, probably one of the hardest things dealing with git is definitely dealing with those pesky merge conflicts. So as you uh, bring your local repo up to date with the remote. If you have a single line that does not, uh, that cannot be pulled down locally without causing a conflict, you're gonna have a merge conflict and you have to learn how to deal with that. And again, we will handle merge conflicts and the different ways to handle those in a future video.